so <clears throat> welcome to this lecture after calculating or knowing that if you have variables you can calculate the objective function and fitness function that we saw in the last set of lectures as well as we saw the computer programs okay so if you have the set of variables with you you can calculate the objective function and subsequently the fitness functions when objective function is calculated now today we'll see what do we mean by a individual chromosome or variables or nd point so we saw in the last lecture as we saw in the last lecture uh, they they were variables okay so a uh, variables are actually defined in the problem here okay so x1 x2 and so on was uh, were the variables x is equal to x1 x2 and so on okay it's written over here so these are the variables these are also a set of variables or a set uh, a variable set x is also known as individual and what is the individual in fact individual is a n dimensional point a nd point okay so individual is an nd point which is also a kind of solution point in a problem okay so that is also called individual so this point we should remember this is a individual and in genetic terms an individual in genetic terms in defined by a term called chromosome okay so uh, that chromosome or that uh, that chromosome contains all the genetic information for an individual okay so a individual in a genetics term is nothing but a chromosome okay because this that will contain all the information for an individual therefore what we can say a individual chromosome variables or a nd solution points n dimensional solution points corresponds to a same thing however they are represented differently okay for example how a um, uh, a variable nd point or individual are represented they are represented by this okay a point x n dimensional point x this is a individual and these are the numbers possibly a decimal set of numbers x1 x2 and so on are decimal set of so this is a nd point n dimensional point okay and this is also we can say a individual which is defined by a set of various variables in it okay now let us see what do we mean by a chromosome chromosome is also individual but only a representation is different okay so let us see what is a chromosome now so a chromosome is basically a coding of a individual okay so individual is kind of, uh, is coded as a chromosome now what we mean by coding a variable as a chromosome if you have a variable x written in this way x1 x2 up to xn then it can be coded in a form of uh, suppose a variable x1 i am taking one variable okay x1 or xi and it can be coded in a binary coding okay you can use other kind of coding also but for now we are taking binary coding so xi can be coded as a binary coding so this is using 4 bit and uh, uh, equivalently the value will be how much if you take an integer terms it will be suppose if you want to have value of this as integer terms it will be i think uh, uh, one here uh, zero it would have been two here and four here and maybe um, here four here sorry two four eight uh, sixteen so it will be around if i'm not mistaken it will be seventeen okay uh, similarly so you can say that variable has been represented by a 4 bit number same variable can also be represented by a 8 bit number okay so this don't don't correlate they are not same okay so this variable could be represented as a 4 bit as a 8 bit or as a n bit so this representation basically depends on how much accuracy we want uh, in representing our our individual okay so x1 or xi how much accurately want to represent number of it will increase okay that will give you the idea of 
granularity okay how close you want to do that okay so using more bits will be a more accurate representation of a individual so that is how your individual can be represented as a chromosome so if you see this chromosome are basically a segment okay so this is a chromosome uh, so basically uh, this is a part of a chromosome one of the variables xi okay so there will be several xi but uh, we are taking at present one xi and this xi uh, is in the range of lower and upper range of the uh, variable bounds okay so there is a bound on variable each of the variables we have seen and depending on that variable we can compute this value okay and uh, this xi the value of the variable in decimal terms okay you can get the integer value of this but actual value will be depending on how the upper and lower bounds are defined and depending on that lower bound you can upper and lower bound you can find the value of xi okay we'll take up the example in the next slide and see for a given variable x c x uh, x how we can uh, calculate the actual value in decimal terms so here let us take an example so this example here if suppose if you have a chromosome segment i'm calling because there will be several uh, several variables uh, here in a chromosome chromosome will contain several variables this x1 will correspond to a chromosome segment so whatever we have been seeing till now is a chromosome segment i think i'll change the pen color because So chromosome segment so what is this chromosome segment suppose you have a chromosome represented this way okay the integer variable integer value of this can be calculated as 149 so this is corresponding to 1 this is 0 this is 2 raised to power 4 so this corresponds to 4 Sorry, this corresponds to 4, okay. Then this corresponds to 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. So if you see, this value will come out to be 128 plus 16 plus uh, 4 plus 1. So this decimal value will be 149 if the calculations are going correct it should be 149 and suppose the upper and lower bound defined for this particular variable is from minus 1 to 5 then i can calculate the value in the following way so xu minus xl here okay this is the range so x1 xu is 5 and xl is minus 1 so this becomes 6 divided by uh, multiply this by xi whatever is the number xi here so that is 149 and this whole is divided by 2 raised to power 8 bits so 2 raised to power nb is 256 minus 1 that is 255 and this is x lower bound so minus 1 so if you see this comes out to be uh, i'll just check and this comes out to be 149 into 6 turns out to be 894 and we divide it by 255 894 divided sorry 894 divided by 255 that comes out to be three point this part comes out to be three point five zero five eight five nine rather okay and then you subtract one from this so it comes out to be two point five zero five nine so this is what this particular string will represent in terms of decimal term uh, decimal value of a variable okay so a variable having this value 
would be represented by uh, this particular chromosome segment. So that is how all the variables can be calculated, can be represented and calculated. Now let us see uh, how this whole set of, so all the variables if you see, not there will be one variable, there will be several because it is an n-dimensional array, x is n-dimensional. So when x is n-dimensional then each variables will just put side by side okay so this is corresponding to x1 this set of ones and zeros corresponds to x and so on so this is now a full chromosome and this is an individual same thing represented in a different way and these are then what you call is a chromosome segment for which we did the calculation just now okay so this is one of the segment okay so that is how a chromosome is represented in GA or an individual is represented as chromosome in GA. So if you see this uh, one string, okay, this is ones and zeros, so this is also a string or a chromosome string we call, is a equivalent to an individual in a population. So this is basically equivalent to an individual. So this is an individual and this is chromosome or chromosome string whatever you may like to call and these are basically same thing one is in a genetic term other in a so this is also a individual and if you have population then such individuals will be a population will be a set of such individuals individuals so a population will contain several such individuals okay <clears throat> now let us see the programming part of it so in this case what we have seen that how to represent uh, the uh, the the uh, individuals in a chromosome sense and uh, how, that will also require how to convert this binary string that is a chromosome segment into an integer equivalent okay and then we will use bounds for scaling so we'll now see how that is done or how, how can we program this part so <clears throat> Here, uh, first program we are seeing just a structure of the program we'll talk about. The actual program we'll write in a, in a different, uh, different presentation. So, generate binary string for a specified length. So, once you specify the length, okay, specify the length, and the program should generate a, a string of ones and zeros and so on. So, this may be a chromosome segment or a full chromosome may be generated at the same time, depending on what you want. Okay, basically the idea here is once you give a string length or a string uh, or a chromosome length or a chromosome segment length whatever you want to do it should be able to uh, generate that one okay and suppose you want to generate several such uh, strings uh, randomly so this program is basically meant for generating that strings randomly okay so let's say uh, this is the function here this is the name of function pop string is a function name And in this function name, basically the step one is you initialize an array of size string length with all elements zero. So you just have to generate the array having all zeros. Okay. And then you uh, have a count from one to number of strings, number of uh, ones and zero, that is the string length. And then you generate a random number in the range zero and one. If that random number generated is greater than zero, five, that string becomes one else it is already zero there and that is how a that string is returned after that and that is how you get a uh, get a um, randomly generated chromosomes or randomly generated individuals in terms of chromosomes okay so this program is basically for generating the strings uh, now we'll see how to <coughs> convert this binary string to an integer equivalent so another program for doing that uh, structure of that program is uh, this is the name of function the code individual that means from a string you have to find the value of individual but here we are finding an individual in terms of integer only okay we are not doing scaling scaling will do uh, we can do later on once we know the integer value so it is only generating the integer value 
So here what we do is in this, uh, this is the output given by the program and this is the input taken by the program, string is the input. So this is string basically is a chromosome segment, okay, one, zero, zero, whatever it may be. So that string it will take to initialize the value to zero. Then, uh, then you just uh, have a for loop for number of elements in the string. So you count the number of elements in the strings, okay. And after, for that number of string, you have to calculate the value plus two into the number of string minus one. So that is how this is MSB. So string number is string i is uh, string i is basically the string number okay one or zero i think there is some mistake here the two raised to power string here string i so one or zero and minus one so i think there is some mistake here basically it, we are trying to do two raised to power n and multiply and go on adding it so n is the bit number okay n is the bit number so for n bit uh, we'll try, uh, start with i and 2 raised to power that i would be the string number so <clears throat> so if we have a string here what will be string i string i will be 1 over here and I think there is something some mistake here but basically we'll we'll see when we write the program but basically the idea here is to generate that number and go on adding go on adding that number one by one okay so that is how an individual is decoded from the string so we'll stop here for now and we'll see the programs in the uh, next uh, lecture